We zijn hier backstage op het Alcatraz Metal Fest. Vier dagen lang spelen de beste metal bands hier in Kortrijk of All Places. Het is een geweldig festival en een van die grote bands, legendarische bands, die net de main stage, de prison stage hebben gesloopt, is het legendarische Sepultura. En naast mij staat Andreas Kisser. Andreas, welkom in Belgium again. Thank you. Um, first of all, a great set. You guys are here to promote your last record, the Quadra record. A record that came out in 2020 right during uh, the COVID time. Yeah. And not long ago, you said something really interesting about it. Um, in an interview, when somebody asked you, well, like, all right, when are you going to start writing a new record? You said, why do we have to write a new record? <laughs> and why I thought it was refreshing, especially for younger bands, it feels like all these records that came out in 2020, young bands, smaller bands, were all forced to write a new song because all those records were dead. And then there's you. Well, I mean, uh We put out the album in February 2020. It was like a month before the, the lockdown happened in the world. We were ready to go on tour, you know, rehearsed, practiced, the plane tickets bought and everything. But we have to cancel everything. We kind of uh, changed the, the, the focus, you know, the goal. I mean, we start working on the internet. Every Wednesday we had the Sepul Quarta. We, we kind of made an album without knowing we were doing because we were doing like every Wednesday calling our friends, you know, to jam together. We did interviews, Q&A with the fans and stuff. It kept the band busy, kept the band working, you know. It was our backstage, our stage, our meeting room, you know, because every, every week we have to get together to arrange and to organize everything, you know. So we kept the band alive and working. And we came out with an album that was not planned, but it came out uh, amazingly well, you know. And, uh, and Quadra, I mean, Quadra is a very strong album that people were very anxious to see it live and ourselves too, you know. So now we're finally doing the, the tour that we're supposed to do two years ago. And it feels great. You know, I think people are really making the best of, of the moment now, you know, not letting things for tomorrow because, you know, the lockdown show there would maybe no tomorrow, <laughs> you know. So um, it's great to see the crowds back, you know, everybody has a, such a great energy and stuff and uh, it's good to be here, you know. Of course, next year is going to be 40 years of uh, Sepultura. My first question about it, a very logical question, how do you start compiling a set list for 40 years of Sepultura? <laughs> Yeah, man, for next year, that's a will be a big problem. <laughs> But uh, we like to to try to do a place on the set list that we change songs. You know, we like to play the side B's and side C's and side D's. <laughs> you know, songs that we never played before. And uh, because do you use your heart or do you use your brain when you have to compile it? Both. Uh, sometimes it's a fan or a friend who suggests something and we go there and play, you know. I mean, we have no problem of uh, really dealing with our own catalog, you know. It's great when we have a challenge to play something that we don't play for so long. And the idea is to, to do a live album for next year, you know, to celebrate 40 years of Sepultura. This lineup, it's, it's fantastic, you know, we feel so great on stage and jamming, playing songs from every part of our history, especially the Quadra songs, which is amazing, you know, to play live. So we want to put that on a live album and that's what we're going to work for next year. Uh, when you go through the, the whole catalog and like you said, all the, the hidden gems, the things you forgot about, yes. um, what's the difference between uh, a young Andreas Kisser as a songwriter and the older man? that wrote uh, Quadra? Well, good question. <laughs> In a lot of sense, uh, it's the same. I, I think I still have the same fire, the same uh, motivation, you know, to write and to deal with music every day, to study. I study classical guitar every day. You know, I love to, to learn something new, to pick up like a, you know, a music that was written 500 years ago. And now I have the possibility to to, to read that and play, you know, it's, it's very exciting, you know, and Um, and the fans from Sepultura keep us so much alive, <laughs> you know. It's, it's so much motivating to see their, uh, their dedication to us, you know. The tickets, all the shows we've been sold out and the merchandising and all the stuff that we received by the, um, you know, the, the social media and etc. You know, the privilege to be alive and, and to be in a band like Sepultura, you know, it's, it's great. You think about it because that's, um, not many people have it in life. But that's what you will be remembered for. I do you so. do you do you do you sometimes think about it, or does life still go too fast? No, 
I don't think about that kind of stuff, man. You know, it's not up to me. You know, people will have their memories and their their things to to carry with them. And all I do is what I do. What I do, you know, we love what we do. Sepultura is it is in an amazing momentum. We love each other as a band. You know, we respect each other. We are in the same dressing room. You know, we we enjoy to be together. You know, together with our crew and stuff. Um, it's a privilege to be here in Europe. It's such a, a great festival with such great bands and, and we see our fans there with our shirts singing our songs and stuff. It's amazing, man. I'll, I'm very thankful you know, for everything that uh, it's happening with Sepultura nowadays. There's also the radio show now, a successful radio show. Oh, yeah. Um, a friend of mine actually was on your show, Martin from Destruction. Uh, oh, right. yes. he, he couldn't, I mean, it was the, <laughs> I mean, he was crying out of joy because he was on the show. Um, since you're doing the show, you look different at music from other bands because sometimes when you're in a band that's the only thing you're thinking about yeah. the band the band with the good things and the bad things do you enjoy listening to music more now you have a, now that you have a radio show that you have to prepare for and, and and interview bands yeah i do very naturally you know i don't i don't really prepare anything uh, I just like to talk to people, you know, talk to, to the bands. And I have, of course, a co-producer who kind of prepare the interviews and stuff. But 90% of the, the show is to, for new bands, you know, that doesn't have any um, deal or doesn't have any too much opportunity, you know, to play their music. So I open there the space for them to play, to talk about their music and stuff. And uh, it's an outlet for, for metal. When you see a younger band doing things, does it bring you back to how you started? Are there a lot of things, something you want to be like, something like a father figure, but like do this, do that, because there's so much knowledge and so much experience. Yeah, of course, I try to, to help uh, whatever I can, you know. Uh, I do sometimes like guitar clinics and stuff and, and, and I open, you know, the space for them to ask questions and stuff and, and it's cool, you know, I learn a lot, you know, because of, of their doubts or their, their things they don't know very well or whatever, they want to know about guitars or how do I do warm-ups or what do I think about Beyonce or something. <laughs> what do you think about Beyonce? I think she's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> um, is it true, is it correct I read somewhere that your son's also involved in the show? Oh yeah, my son Johan. I have three uh, three kids. Uh, Julia is 28, Johan is 20, uh, 26, and Enzo is uh, 17. And Johan is a um, it's a musician. He's working on his own career. He has his own band, and we we have a band together that we play covers and stuff. And he plays piano. He sings. He he can write music and stuff. He's amazing, you know. And he's really doing well. I mean, uh, probably a lot of fathers listening. Usually, when you have kids, you it's inevitably you look a little bit. Uh, to see if there's something from you in them, uh, especially when they're also into music. How is it? What do you see in, in your kids? Is it, is it, do you think like they're going to follow the same path completely like you? I don't know. Johan is going to the same path, you know, to the music industry, you know, to the business, traveling and having his band and recording studios, doing interviews and stuff. He's already on his path, you know. Um, he likes heavy metal, he likes thrash metal, but he likes classical music as well. He likes, uh, you know, uh, independent rock and all that stuff. You know, and uh, so he's very open. He's a he's a teacher as well. He knows everything about music and stuff. So he's far beyond uh, <laughs> what I achieved already. You know, in knowledge and stuff. So uh, it's great to see. You know, of course, at my house since they were born, music was all over the place. I have guitars and all over the place and listen to music and playing guitar all the time. They came to see the shows when they were very young, you know, so they understand a little bit the backstage, how it works and everything. So it's part of our life, you know, the, our family. So I guess they feel comfortable in that uh, environment. Last question. Um, yeah, you're one of the most famous trash metal, whatever guitarist of all time. Um, where does Andreas Skisser write songs? Do you have a room in your house? Yes. I have my little bunker. <laughs> Can you describe the room? Yeah, it's a small place where I keep all my guitars and, you know, stuff that I keep for my football team and stuff. And But uh, ba basically my, my instruments where I study guitar, I have my computer, my Pro Tools. It's not a professional studio, but I have really good equipment that I can do my demos and, and start the projects. And I wrote 
I don't know, five to six albums in that room, <laughs> you know, the Sepultura stuff, De La Tierra stuff, you know, and soundtracks for movies and other other projects I do in Brazil. I, I always work there and Johan as well is working on the room. So now we divide, you know, a very small room, but uh, we keep um, creativity going and uh, it's a great room, good vibes. <laughs> the place where all the magic happens. Exactly. <laughs> Andreas Kisser, thank you very much for the interview. Thank you. Good luck with the rest of the tour and obviously next year, 40 years of Sepultura. Yeah, Let's celebrate. <laughs>